people. He said, the, the devil is the god of this world. The Greek word is hothios. Why do you give him a small g? Why don't you give him a capital G? Because he's the god. For Moses, why don't you give him a capital G? Why do you give him a small g? Because in Greek, there is no such thing as a capital G, no such thing as a small g. In Hebrew, no such thing as a capital G, no such thing as a small g. In Arabic, no such thing as a capital G, and no such thing as a small g. See, this is the game that the guys are playing. However, what makes him God? He said, no, he is born without a father. He had no father, so he must have a father. You must give him a father. So his father is God. So Allah says, Inna masala Isa in the Allahi kamasali Adama. He says, most certainly the similitude, the example of Jesus in the sight of Allah is like that of Adam. Adam alayhi salam. Khalaqahum in turabin. He created him from dust. Thumma qala lahu kun fayakun. And he said, be and he was. This is it. If Jesus had no father. If that makes God his father, and he becomes a veritable son of God, as God, because they say he is the begotten son of God, so the begotten son must be like the father. If the father is an Indian, the son is an Indian. The father is a Greek, the son is a Greek. The father is a Chinese, the son is a Chinese. It's natural. So if the father is God, then the son is God, begotten son. So Allah says, no. This is not so in the Bible. He's got sons by the tons, tons. You know, tons, you can put them in the scale. Tons, tons of sons. Sounds exaggeration. But I give it to you, references. Look, look, in the New Testament, chapter 3, verse 38. Ah, in the same, I think it's not the same verse. They know, it says, Adam, which was the son of God. It's written there. Adam, which was the son of God. Luke chapter 3 verse 38. Is he not the son of God? You ask them, in the Bible, that Nib Bible, he says, the one and only son Jesus. I said, look, this one and only son you're talking about, Luke says, and Adam, the son of God. Same New Testament. How can you have one and only, and you have Adam, the son of God? They had the word begotten there before. Jesus, the only begotten son. And we took exception to that. We says begetting is an animal act. It belongs to the lower animal functions of sex. How can you attribute such a quality to God that God begot a son? How can God beget? He can create by his act of will. But he doesn't beget. He doesn't take his seed and plant it into other people's wives and daughters. By artificial insemination or any other way. This is not, he, this is not his way. He creates by his act of will. So Adam, the son of God not all Genesis the very first book of the Bible chapter 6 verse 2 and 4 he said that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them to wife all that they chose and when the sons of God sins from hot when they came in unto the daughters of men and brought children to them they became great men of old men of renown how many sons did he have sons sins plural he had them by the tons I'm telling you Exodus, second book of the Bible, chapter 4, verse 2, verse 22, I mean, sorry. Israel is my son, God says. This is the Jewish language, you see. Israel means Yaqub alayhi salam. Israel is my son, even my firstborn. He's even my firstborn. The same God in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 9, he says, For I, God, am a father to Israel. To the Jews and Ephraim is my son my firstborn and Ephraim is my firstborn I said how can you have two firstborns Israel is his firstborn Ephraim is his firstborn in the book of Psalms God speaks to David according to their book according to their Bible God says to Daud salam, I will declare a decree unto thee that thou art my son this day have I begotten thee. I brought you into being today. This day have I begotten thee. Thou art my son. How many sons has he got? He's got them by the tons. In your book. But yet they have the audacity to say, One and only son, Jesus. He said, what are you reading? This book? In your book? 
How do you account? You know, you, I don't know how you can talk to people like that. How can you talk to people like that? You know, the book is written simple, basic language. You speak, I said, look, you say one, any other son says, no. I said, who is this? Adam is the son of God. Israel is the son of God. Ephraim is the son of God. Da David is the son of God. And further, in the New Testament, we are told, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Means every Tom, Dick and Harry, if you follow the will and plan of God, you are a godly person. In the language of the Jew, you are a son of God. It meant nothing more than that. It was a metaphorical statement. See? But they say, no, he was begotten. See, Adam was made by God. Jesus was begotten. I says, Paul gives a knockout to all this. Paul, the 13th self-appointed apostle of Jesus. He appointed himself. In the book of Hebrews, he wrote. He wrote the book of Hebrews. Chapter 7, verses 1 and 3. It says, For this Melchizedek, Malik, Sadek Saleh, Melchizedek, that's how it's King of Salam, Salam, King of Salam, peace, King of Salam, priest of the Most High God, Melchizedek, without father. He says, without father, without mother, greater than Jesus. Jesus had a mother. See? He says, without father, all right? So Jesus had no father. This man also got no father. Without mother, Jesus had a mother. So he's superior to Jesus. No, your, your own logic, your own reasoning. We are not producing anything from the Quran, producing from your own book, that this man Melchizedek is greater than Jesus according to your standards, your false standards. He's greater. Without father, without mother. Without descent. Jesus had a descent. To such an extent they give him 66 fathers and grandfathers in two gene genealogies. Descent. This is the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham, the son of David, and Abraham begat Isaac and I. Two genealogies they give him. Descent. How he came down. From where? Sixty-six fathers and grandfathers they give him. A man who had no father. They give him sixty-six fathers and grandfathers. In the book. This man, Melchizedek, no descent, no genealogy. Having neither the beginning of days nor the end of life. No beginning of days, no end of life. Jesus, Adam had a beginning and he had an end. Isa alayhi salam, he had a beginning in the stable and he had, according to the Christians, an apparent end. He died on the cross. He gave up the ghost. That's what he says. Is it true? He said, yes. It's all right. He had an end. All right, he came back for a second inning. That's different. But the first inning, he was knocked out. This man, Melchizedek, no beginning, no end. I'm asking, please, man, who is greater, Jesus or Melchizedek? Put Adam one side. Leave poor Adam one side. He had enough trouble. <laughs> oh, his miracles make him God. I said, look, man, this poor man is telling you, he's telling you, Matthew chapter 28 verse 18, he says, all power is given unto me, is given to me, is not mine. Chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12 verse 28, he said, I cast out devils by the Spirit of God. With God's help I'm doing this, casting out devils. Then the kingdom of God is come unto you. John chapter 5 verse 30, he says, I can of my own self do nothing. Nothing I can do of myself. God can do everything of himself. He doesn't need anybody. He says, I can do nothing of myself. He said, as I hear, I judge. Whatever God tells me to do, to say, I say. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I seek not my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Where does he say it is his own power he is doing things? Luke chapter 11 verse 20, he said, I with the finger of God cast out devils means with Allah's help I'm casting out devils where does he say he is doing the works nowhere the greatest miracle that Jesus performed was according to the scriptures giving life back to the dead one of his disciples called Lazarus he had died and Jesus wasn't there to help him out in his 
Sakaratul Maut. Dead pangs, he wasn't there. And when Jesus reaches there, four days late, the man is dead and buried. Not buried, put in a sepulchre, in a room, big room in his chamber. Sepulchre, not grave. So Jesus comes and Martha, the sister of Lazarus, she's crying, waiting. John chapter 11 verse 40. This is when, uh, starting from 33. So when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, Martha, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit. He groaned. You know what's groaning? You cry out to God. You know, you speak, you're speaking words, but those words are not audible enough for the neighbor to hear. Says so the guy is groaning. He's not groaning. He's talking to Allah. Oh Lord, have mercy upon. Whatever you're talking, 